The Incredible Hulk is, in my opinion, one of the weakest films in the MCU. Now, if they had went with a better story, and maybe better action even, this movie could have been something really special. But at the end of the day, it's one of my least liked films from Marvel Studios. Now, before I talk about story, I want to talk about the cast, which consists of Edward Norton, Lee Tyler, William Hurt, and Tim Ross. I have to say, the cast in this movie did a good job. Everyone seemed to have chemistry with each other, and especially hats off to Tim Ross, who played Emil Blonsky, which eventually led him to becoming the abomination. He really took the role and went, went somewhere far. And it's a shame he never came back to reprise the role in any future Marvel film. I felt like that was a missed opportunity. He was an interesting villain, and his goals and morals were clear from the start. He wanted the Hulk's power. And basically, he, he was wanting to do anything and get it. Now, the story, man, consists of Bruce Byrne living in Brazil five years after he becomes the Hulk, where he tries to hide and live a normal life, but eventually... Daddy is done the boat. Ross finds him, and he has to go on the run. All the while, he's looking for a cure to get rid of the Hulk, because to him, he looks at it like a disease. And this was years before he started up the Hulk for a part of himself. I have to say, for a whole film, this movie is okay, but it's just... It's the weakest, one of the weakest films in the MCU. And I felt like it wasn't enough here to keep me entertained. Especially, it's not that great years later when you look on the grand scheme of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now one thing I will say is that Edward Norton did a decent job playing Bruce Banner here in this movie. He's not the best interpretation of the character, but I think he did... Like I said, decent enough for what he had. Now, some parts of the film really shine, especially in the beginning, when he just tries all his best to get rid of the Hulk. And basically, he just wants to live a normal life. But Bruce Banner is a character that really just wants to leave everything he ever went through in his life behind. Like I said before, this movie is okay. It's somewhat on the line towards bad, but this is not a bad film in a slight imagination. It's just real boring. The action is pretty good. The music is a good fit for this film. But I feel everything else was disappointing, to say at least. The love interest in this film with Bruce Banner, Bay Ross, played by Lee Tyler, eh, she was all right. But nothing impressive. And William Hurt did a good job for playing Daddy Stonebaugh Ross. He was really determined to find the Hulk and harness his power. Like I said before, it's been nearly 11 years since we even had a Hulk film. But I will say this movie is definitely better than a 2003 Hulk movie. Okay, on scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving this film a 6. Now, the reason I'm giving it so low of a score is because we have gotten better Marvel films in the last 11 years. And with this being one of the early films, it really shows its age in today's world. I mean, stories passable, the themes are not strong enough, and Edward Norton just does a decent job here. Nothing phenomenal, but... I really felt like they missed the ball here with this film. This is not a bad movie. It's just early boring, in my opinion. Now, if they would have done more for this movie, then this could have been something really special here. And you know what's upsetting about this film? We never got a sequel to this movie. They set up the leader. They set up a lot of things for... The Crubble Hulk 2, which never happened. And that whole distribution rights of Universal is just ridiculous. If Marvel and Sony could work out a deal for Spider-Man to have his own movie in the MCU, I don't know why the hell it couldn't make another Hulk film. But 
besides all that, I think this film is really, like I said before, it's, it's weak. It's nothing special in a day. But one thing I will say is that I got to look the hole in this film. You look visually amazing. I kind of wish they hadn't got away from that. I mean, I wish they would kept this model the whole in the future Marvel films. But anyway, this f- film right here, it stands the test of time, man. It's passable at the end of the day. And that's my review of The Incredible Hall. Leave a comment section below. Let me know what you think about this film. You know, it's been almost 11 years since this movie has been out. And in those 11 years, sadly, Hulk has never gotten another solo film. And I really think a solo Hulk film today would do real well box office-wise and Kroger-wise as well. I mean, there's a reason this movie is so boring and lame. But at least you have to admit that it did lay the stepping stones to what the Hulk will eventually become down the line. And of course, the character of Bruce Barron grown tremendously since this movie. Now, is it a better Hulk film overall compared to that? Yeah, considering we only had two Hulk films since 2003, but it could have been a whole lot better. All right, up next, I'm going to review Captain America, the first Avenger, because I want to get most of the Phase 1 films I want to review those and get those out the way. All right. This is Slim Guy 172 saying peace out.